everybody. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. This is a rather impromptu video. I had not planned on this at all, but I think it's necessary because a whole bunch of people have asked me this question and those who insist on Torah observancy have used this as an argument against the gospel and against what I've taught in the past. So I think it's all really necessary that we learn the truth here. And the issue is this. I've taught in 1 Corinthians 7 that Paul said, circumcision of the flesh counts for nothing. Not for salvation, not for obedience, zip, zero, zilch counts for nothing. But then in Acts 16, we see a seemingly contradictory event where Paul circumcises a brother in Christ named Timothy. This can be summed up and made clear to you so that you can see the truth in as little as five minutes. So let's just go ahead and take a look at Acts 16 and see what it says. Paul came also to Derby and to Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in faith and they increased in numbers daily. So really key points about this paragraph. Number one, Timothy is a Jew. His mom is a Jew. Two, he's well known across the entire area and people know that he's Jewish. Three, he's accompanying Paul on a mission to spread the gospel and bring people to Christ and the areas in which they were going, there were Jews. Now, why would he have him circumcised? This ties in to 1 Corinthians 9, which I've done a teaching on. There is huge animosity between Jews and Gentiles during this time period. If you were a Jew like Timothy and you were trying to talk to other Jewish people about salvation and talk to them about Christ and they didn't know anything about it yet and they found out that you weren't upholding the law, you would be an abomination to them. They wouldn't even let you get in one sentence if they knew that you weren't upholding the law as good as you could. And so you can't even deliver the gospel message to them. You can't even talk to them about salvation because they'll just cut you off. Let's look at Acts 10. And this is something that Peter says um, in a different story, but I just want to highlight it so you see the animosity between Jews and Gentiles. In Acts 10, 28, Peter says, And he said to them, You yourselves know how unlawful it is for a Jew to associate with or to visit anyone of another nation. But God has shown me that I should not call any person common or unclean. So it's unlawful um, for a Jew to associate with or visit anyone from another nation. That's unlawful to them. Likewise, uh, it is an abomination almost if there's a Jew who's not upholding the law, who isn't circumcised. You're just not gonna even wanna talk to that person. So Timothy literally gave up his freedom in Christ he didn't have to circumcise himself, but he gave up that liberty so that when he went into the areas where there were Jews, he presented himself as under the law, the old law, though not under it himself, so that they would receive him, so that he could preach to them about Christ and about the gospel, that he might save some of them. This ties in directly to 1 Corinthians Nine. And I've done a teaching on this in a separate video. I'm going to link it uh, somewhere up here. It's called Mirroring to Save Souls. Let's hear what Paul has to say about presenting himself to all different kinds of people so that he may win more of them. It says, For though I am free from all, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win more of them. To the Jews, I became a Jew in order to win the Jews. To those under the law, I became as one under the law. Key point in parentheses here, though not being myself under the law, that I might win those under the law. That's why he had uh, Timothy circumcised. They presented themselves under an appearance of upholding the law so that the Jews wouldn't immediately reject them, so that they could sit down at a table and actually discuss Christ and discuss the gospel, so that maybe some of them might be won. 
Paul goes on just to talk about the Gentiles as well. To those outside the law, outside of the Mosaic law, I became as one outside of the law. Key part again in parentheses, not being outside of the law of God, but under the law of Christ. That's a common argument that all these Torah observant people say is, oh, well, if you're giving up the Mosaic law, then you're just lawless. Paul's saying here, I'm not under the Mosaic law. I'm under the law of Christ. It's not that I'm lawless. I'm just under the spiritual law. And again, he says, and I close, that I might win those outside of the law. So that's why he circumcised Timothy. It's, he sacrificed a liberty. I mean, just think about how humble that is. Timothy never had to circumcise himself at all. If you think about how painful circumcision is, he did that for other people so that he could preach to them, so that he could save, you know, tell people about Christ and how they could be saved. Wow, talk about being humble, right? Um, this actually ties in. I just want to close here because um, I think it's sort of funny. But if you read in Galatians 2, there is an individual named Titus, a brother in Christ, who was fully a Greek, not a Jew at all, and he was like precious cargo. Uh, Paul was trying to transport Titus through the region to the other apostles to show, hey, look, there is an uncircumcised Gentile who has received the Spirit of God. Look, you don't have to be circumcised. So let's just read this real quick. Um, Paul says, uh, then after 14 years, I went up again to Jerusalem with Barnabas, taking Titus along with me. I went up because of a revelation and set before them, though privately before those who seemed influential, the gospel that I proclaim among the Gentiles, in order to make sure I was not running or had not run in vain. But even Titus, who was with me, was not forced to be circumcised, though he was a Greek. Yet because of false brothers secretly brought in, who slipped in to spy out our freedom that we have in Christ Jesus, so that they might bring us into slavery, to them we did not yield in submission even for a moment, so that the truth of the gospel might be preserved for you. <laughs> um, I actually think this is pretty funny because it's talking about the truth of the gospel being preserved is essentially <laughs> um, escorting Titus and his precious cargo, um, making sure that he stays uncircumcised so that the apostles could see that the Spirit of God actually lives in uncircumcised Gentiles. Um, you know, one of the other things I thought that was funny about this, and I really couldn't find anything on the internet, um, but I always wondered, you know, how exactly Jews knew someone was or was not circumcised, you know? I mean, they didn't have public restrooms back then, so just, I imagine it's sort of something like... just add in a little fun there. But I hope you guys see that this is not contradictory at all. Paul's words, the events of Paul's life, they were not contradictory at all. If anything, it sh you should be amazed at how humble of a man Paul was and how humble of his, you know the disciples were at that time, that they were willing to give up their full liberty in Christ, do something that they didn't have to do, circumcision, which is not pleasant, especially for an adult, and you think about no anesthesia, they were willing to give that up so that Jews might receive them better and they can actually preach the gospel. Absolutely amazing. But I hope this bless you. This is Mike with On Point Preparedness. See you everybody.